The raging wars in Europe and the Middle East underscore the urgency of America developing a new strategy to secure our safety and that of the free world. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. The basic structures and rules that have prevented a global conflagration since 1945 are dangerously unraveling. China is aggressively asserting itself around the world diplomatically and militarily. Dictator Xi Jinping has made clear he wants a new world order dominated by Beijing. Vladimir Putin deeply desires to recreate the shattered Soviet empire and have the Kremlin control Europe. Key to that is destroying an independent Ukraine, seizing the Baltic countries of Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia, and destroying NATO. And of course, Iran wants mastery of the oil-rich Middle East. All three, not to mention North Korea, are flouting the rules of the post-World War II world, such as not violating and forcibly changing a nation's borders, think Ukraine, and flouting the principle of freedom of the seas, think Beijing's militarizing the South China Sea, a crucial international waterway. During the Cold War, except for the Cuban Missile Crisis, the U.S. and the Soviet Union operated within understood limits. That's not the case unfolding with the world today. Economically, post-World War II, the U.S. pushed, reducing trade barriers. The explosion of international trade immensely enriched the world. Now protectionism is ominously on the rise. We should look at the 1930s to see where that can lead. What U.S. leaders, especially the Biden crowd, don't grasp is that the rules of international behavior, like don't invade your neighbors, are useless unless they are enforced. Instead, we've been treated to chronic appeasement and chaotic retreats. Our adversaries are emboldened. China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, and other bad actors see the U.S. as a declining power going in the way of the Roman Empire. Just as we created a benign world order from the ashes of World War II, we must take the lead in doing so again. With deft and realistic diplomacy, we can mobilize the immense assets of the free world. We need to urgently repair and expand our dilapidated military. For instance, we should work with Japan and South Korean shipyards in building badly needed new submarines. A new administration in 2025 can pursue pro-growth policies of massive cuts in tax rates, creating a sound and stable dollar, and rolling back the flood a bizarre, economy-killing regulations emanating from our current regime. The follies of immensely wasteful spending in the name of climate change must be curbed and even rolled back. We've already seen how such actions are hollowing out the once mighty German economy with artificially high energy costs. Developing countries will welcome a stable dollar. Current policies from the Federal Reserve and other major central banks are inadvertently impoverishing poorer countries. The Biden administration seems incapable of recalibrating its fantasy view of the world. It still won't grasp that Iran is an irreconcilable enemy. It still thinks it can cut deals with Putin and tame China's disruptive ambitions with feel-good meetings. We created a benign global architecture after World War II. It's essential we do the same again. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh.